Thanks for clicking the video. On our last tutorial, we learned how to print a string on our screen. Now let's try to change the string to any message you want. So open up your terminal and edit the source file we made on the previous tutorial. Recompile the program and run it to happily display the new message on your screen. So far, that's everything our program can do. Wouldn't it be nice if we could store some data in our program? In this video, We'll be learning about variables and data types in C. Variables are a basic feature of any programming language. They can hold data in a computer's memory. This data can be a number of things such as numbers, letters, or other C data types. Every variable has a name and a value. Whenever the name of the variable is mentioned later in the program, the program will think of it as representing the value of the variable. Let me put it this way. Think of the variable to be like a box with your name on it. Your box. And the value to be any stuff that you could place inside the box. Your stuff. The box can contain any stuff that would fit inside it. Whenever we need to recall our stuff, then we could just refer to the box that has your name on it. Echo your box. However, if your stuff is a bit bigger than the box, then surely you would need a bigger box. The same thing is true with data types. Data types are like the size of the box. It should be big enough to hold the value that you're going to store. Anyway, let's do an example. On your text editor, type in the following codes. From now on, I'll be using the Vim text editor because I need the line numbering feature for the tutorial. By the way, the source codes used in this video tutorial are available on my GitHub GIST. The link is in the description below. You can go there and just copy and paste the code for example, values.c to save you from typing. Save the file, then compile and run. And this would be the output of our program. Now let's have a closer look at the code line by line. The first line we're already familiar with. It's a preprocessor directive to include the standard io.h header. And on the third line, we define our main function. The fifth line is a comment. Any text surrounded by a slash star and a star slash is ignored by the compiler. To make a program easier to understand, programmers use comments to describe the purpose of the program, the use of the variable names, and the purpose of the program step. On lines 6 to 9, we declare variables a, 
B, C, and D of different data types. Two integers, a float, and a character. And we also assign values to each of them. The equal sign is an assignment operator. It assigns the value from the right hand operand to the left side operand. It's important to remember that as it's a common gotcha for beginner C programmers. Line 10 is also a comment. Lines 11 to 17 are all printf functions. There's something new with our printf function that we haven't mentioned from our previous tutorial. It can actually take additional arguments. Arguments are the real values passed to the function and are enclosed in parentheses. In the printf function, the first argument is called the format string and the succeeding arguments belong to the print list. The output of our program is the result of displaying the format string after substituting the value of the variables for its placeholders in the format string. You can easily see the placeholder in our format string. It always begins with the modulo symbol. Placeholders modulo C, modulo D, and modulo F are for variable types character, integer, and float respectively. Okay, so we're done with that. Let's go ahead and do another example. Open your text editor, and again, just go to my github gist and copy and paste the code for example math.c to save you from typing save the file compile it and run and this is the output of our program as, as we can see on our example we can also perform quick mathematical calculations on our variables multiplication division subtraction and that's all there is for our second example the code is well commented so it's quite self-explanatory Just take note that mathematical expressions within a program are executed sequentially. For example, on line 10, it will start from the current value of x, multiply it by 2, and assign the result back to x. Also, the decimal number in the modular f placeholder indicates the number of decimal places to be included on our format string. Well, that's all we have for this part of the tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you find this helpful, then please don't forget to leave a like, share the video, or subscribe for more.